Welcome to our deep dive, everyone. Um, today we're going to be talking about this really interesting shift that's happening in HR. Oh, yeah. From engagement to motivation. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at a book by Sylvia. It's called The Blind Leading the Disengaged. And uh, Wow, what a title. I know, right? She doesn't hold back. No, she doesn't. So to guide us through this, we have our expert. Hello. Who knows all about this stuff. Yeah. So first of all, Sylvia makes this claim that your employees' needs are backed by science. But HR is just using rules of thumb from the business world. It's so true, though. It's like they just keep doing the same things over and over again. Yeah, they just keep doing it, even if it's not working. Even if it's not working. And they've got all these, like, tactics they use that they think are going to work. Like what? What are some examples? Like uh, like pizza parties. Oh, yeah. Or Donut Fridays, you know, like. Or those forced fun activities. Yes, forced fun. Like nobody actually wants to do that. And then they send out those surveys that nobody wants to fill out, that nobody reads, that nobody cares about. But they think it makes a difference. It's like they think we're all in kindergarten or something. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're treating us like children. But Sylvia says we need to focus on motivation instead of this engagement stuff. Yes. Because motivation is what actually gets people going. It's what gets them excited about their work. So how do we do that? Well, Sylvia says, we need to understand what motivates people. And she talks about this theory called Hertzberg's two-factor theory. What's that? It's this idea that there are these two different types of factors that affect how people feel about their work. Okay. So you've got hygiene factors, which are things like your salary and your working conditions. Okay, so like the basics. Yeah, the basics. And then you've got motivators, which are things like recognition and growth opportunities and feeling like you're making a difference. Okay. So the hygiene factors are important, but they're not enough. Right. Exactly. You need both. You need the hygiene factors to be in place, but then you need the motivators on top of that to really get people excited. So you can't just throw money at the problem. Nope. Money's not everything. It might make people stay for a little while, but it won't make them love their job. So how do we figure out what those motivators are? Well, Sylvia says that every person is different. So what motivates one person might not motivate another person. Okay. So you need to get to know your employees and figure out what makes them tick. So no more employee of the month plaques. No more generic solutions. It's about being thoughtful and individualized. So how do we do that? What are some concrete things that companies can do? Well, one thing is to create personalized motivation profiles for each employee. What's a motivation profile? It's basically a document that outlines what motivates that specific person. Okay. So it might include their goals, their values, their strengths, their weaknesses. Okay. And then you can use that information to create a work environment that is tailored to their needs. That sounds like a lot of work. It is. Yeah. But it's worth it because when you have motivated employees, you have happy employees. And happy employees are productive employees. Yeah. So ditch the corporate kindergarten and start thinking about what actually makes people tick. Yes. We'll be right back with more from Sylvia's book. You know, one thing Sylvia talks about is this disconnect between what companies say they value and what employees actually care about. Yeah, like all that talk about company culture. Yeah, exactly. But then their actions don't match up. It's all talk and no action. It's like they think they can just throw some pizza parties and call it a day. Or like those International Housekeeping Week things. They go all out for a week. Oh, yeah. And then forget about it the rest of the year. Exactly. Like, come on. Just give us better working conditions and fair pay. Right. Like, that's what we actually care about. Exactly. And having a sense of purpose, like feeling like our work actually matters. Sylvia says a lot of companies try to create this sense of purpose with those mission statements and stuff. Yeah, but it's also generic and meaningless. It's like they just copied and pasted it from some website. Exactly. True purpose has to come from within. It has to be genuine. So how do companies create that? By being honest with their employees about their challenges and their goals. And by giving their employees the opportunity to make a real difference. Yeah. And by empowering them to make decisions and take ownership of their work. So it's not about ping pong tables and free snacks. No. Those things are nice, but they don't actually motivate anyone. It's about creating a culture where people feel valued and respected. Exactly. And where they feel like they can actually make a contribution. Sylvia talks about these three fundamental needs that all humans have. Yeah. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And she says that 
companies need to create an environment where those needs can be met. Right. So for autonomy, it's about giving people the freedom to make their own decisions. And for mastery, it's about providing opportunities for growth and development. And for purpose, it's about connecting people's work to a larger goal. So it's a lot more than just giving people a paycheck. Yeah. It's about creating a workplace where people can actually thrive. So what does this look like in practice? Like, how can companies actually implement these ideas? Well, for one thing, they need to move away from this command and control style of management. Yeah, that's so outdated. It is. We need leaders who are more like coaches and mentors. People who can inspire and empower their teams. Exactly. And companies need to be more open to experimenting with different ways of working. Like what? Like self-managing teams or holacracy. Those are some pretty radical ideas. They are but they could be the key to unlocking employee motivation. It's definitely a different way of thinking about work. It is, but I think it's a necessary change if we want to create a world where work is actually fulfilling. That's a great point. So what about the people who are already stuck in those soul-crushing jobs? What advice does Sylvia have for them? That's a great question, and she doesn't have any easy answers. She knows that not everyone can just quit their job. So what does she suggest? Well, she says that we need to shift our focus from external factors to our own internal mindset. She says that even within the constraints of a less than ideal job, we can still find pockets of motivation and meaning. So we've talked about all these big ideas about motivation. But what about the people who are listening who are like, okay, this is all great, but I'm stuck in a job that I hate. What do I do? Right. Like, how do I actually apply this stuff to my own life? Yes. Sylvie talks about this, too. She says we need to shift our focus Okay. from external factors to our own internal mindset. Like, instead of waiting for our company to change. Right. We need to take control of our own situation. Exactly. So what does that look like? Well, first, she says we need to identify our core values. Okay. What are the things that are most important to us in our work? Like, what are our non-negotiables? Yeah, exactly. What are the things that we absolutely will not compromise on? And once we know what those are... Then we can start to look for ways to bring those values into our work, even if we're not in our dream job. So it's not about finding the perfect job. It's about finding ways to make our current job work for us. And if we can't do that... Then maybe it is time to start looking for something else. But even then, we can still use these ideas to help us find a job that's a better fit. Exactly. Because when we know what we want, yeah. we're more likely to find it. I think that's a really good point. Yeah. It's not about settling. Yeah. No. It's about being intentional. Exactly. About what we want in our work lives. And about taking control of our own careers. So to wrap things up, yeah. if you're feeling unmotivated at work, uh-huh. don't just sit there and complain. Right. Take action. Figure out what you want and then go after it. Yes. Whether that means making changes at your current job Uh or finding a new one. Totally. You have the power to create a work life that is fulfilling and meaningful. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into Sylvia's book, The Blind Leading the Disengaged. It's been a really eye-opening conversation. It has. I hope our listeners feel empowered to take control of their own work lives. Me too. Yeah. And until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing for a better world of work. Bye, everyone.